Hello, grade nines, and welcome to this writing lesson. So some of you have requested to be able to write your own short story. So we may not be writing a short story, but what we are going to do is we're going to take a look at what is called a fractured fairy tale. Um, I did a lesson on this last year with um, some students, and it worked out really good. So let's take a look. So there's a couple of videos here that you can watch as an idea and an example to Fractured Fairy Tales. So I would start with that. I'd probably pause this video now and, you know, watch one of these videos. The first one is a Beauty and the Beast, and the next one is on Rapunzel. Watch one or the other, whatever you want. Um, so a Fractured Fairy Tale is... A deconstructed fairy tale. Maybe you're going to um, look at a fairy tale like Rapunzel and write it from the perspective of the witch or something, you know, like um, you're changing the themes and the ideas within the fairy tale. So read the ideas below on deconstructing and rewriting fairy tales. Make some notes and come up with some ideas. Ultimately, I would like you to pick a fairy tale of your choosing and rewrite it from a different perspective using one of the ideas listed below. So let's look at the first idea here. We have a change of perspective. So like I said, maybe writing um, Rapunzel from the perspective of the witch. So fairy tales are characterized by the use of the third person. What would happen if we narrated the story in the first person? Whose point of view would be adopted? In the fairy tale of Little Red Riding Hood, for instance, we can rewrite the tale from the point of view of the heroine. Um, the wolf, the hunter, or the grandmother. So, you know, rewrite the story of Little Red Riding Hood from the perspective of the wolf. He's just out for a meal. Then he gets chopped up into little bits. So, you know, these are some ideas. These are some things. This is what Fractured Fairy Tales is. We could also select a combination of two or more perspectives or an intermediate in-between perspective. In any case, first-person narration renders the plot much more interesting and vivid and enhances the dramatic um, character of the narration. So a change of time frame. How would it appear? This is another way. You don't have when you are writing your own fractured fairy tale. You don't have to do all of these things. Like pick like Little Red Riding Hood and change the perspective and change the time frame and change of relations and change of characters and space and just like these are ideas. You can do what you want. I'm going to read you an example as well. So how would it appear to children if we transferred the story of a classic fairy tale into the modern era? For example, we create a modern Cinderella who lives in a modern society. Which problems does she face? Another alternative is a future scenario, such as this. The story of Cinderella is located in the distant future, for example, after 2,000 years. So, you know, instead of riding in a pumpkin carriage to the ball, um, you know, maybe she's riding in like a floating car or something, you know, like take these classic fairy tales and bring them into a different time frame. Uh, change of relations. The relations among the heroes of a fairy tale can also be reversed. This provides the possibility for a different outcome of the story. For example, in the tale of Little Red Riding Hood, the wolf may become the good one and the little girl the bad one. What would happen if the hunter had not killed the wolf? What would then be the end of the story? Um, I believe there is a movie called Red. Um, and it's, it's, I think it's a fractured fairy tale movie about Little Red Riding Hood. Anyways, I haven't seen it, but I believe that's what it is. Uh, change of characteristics of heroes. So the roles and characteristics of heroes may also be reversed. The three little pigs can become bad and malicious against the quiet and innocent wolf. The prince frog kisses a princess who becomes a frog too, and they live happily ever after. Um, change of space frame. Natural frame. We can change the natural frame, the environment of the story. By consequence, this means that we make all the necessary transformations and corresponding changes to, in the heroes, the plot, and the means of action. 
Thus, instead of the forest, the plot can unfold on a ship traveling in the sea, on a beach, or in a big commercial shop. Cultural frame. The story can unfold itself in another culture. In the historical or metaphysical sense, in another planet, the modification provides an opportunity for reporting customs and manners of stories. Another culture or civilization. Socioeconomic frame. The heroes may be workers or businessmen. They may belong in the middle class or in an ascending social class. With such an activity, social stereotypes and perceptions are detected. So that one's a little bit more difficult to do, but you get the idea. So what I have here is fractured fairy tales. Now, this is for when you watch one of the films. Now, I know you can't type in this. It's just a picture, so you can just uh, you know type it out differently. Um, I didn't make these I found them somewhere so that's why we're using them but um, what I want you to do is to watch either the Rapunzel or the Beauty and the Beast Fractured Fairy Tale the YouTube uh, links that are at the top of this lesson up here and fill this out so if you're gonna do like Rapunzel and I'm sure you most of you have seen the movie Tangled um, I've watched it like last week because I have a four-year-old daughter so um, name, Rapunzel, or I guess this would be your name, title, Rapunzel, traditional point of view, um, featured point of view, while the Rapunzel there is, um, looks like a third person kind of point of view in that one, featured characters, we have Rapunzel's still good in this one, and the evil character is still the witch, so what's the problem, what's the solution, what happens in the beginning, the middle, and the end, so what was, this is the main point, that at, uh, what was different in the Fractured Fairy Tale, and which version do you like better and why? So you can do this for the Beauty and the Beast one, you can do this, um, I believe those YouTube links that I put up at the top are for a YouTube channel called Rocky and Bullwinkle, they have a ton of Fractured Fairy Tales if you want to, after watching, um, or if you want to pick a different one, you can do that, uh, but the first two pages here, are going to be for after you watch one of the Fractured Fairy Tales. I want you to fill this out. Then we move on to you writing your own. So based on the suggestions that we just went through up top here, um, changing the perspective, time frame, based on that, I want you to pick your own fairy tale it doesn't have to be a Disney one like you can just like search up on Google like search classic fairy tales um, so this one and then you can so it's by this is your name title of your fairy tale based on so based on, I'm gonna read you one that's based on um, giant Jack and the giant beanstalk so the setting you know you well, the setting in Jack and the Giant Beanstalk is like the beanstalk and in the clouds and a farm there. Characters here. This is if you wanted to draw a picture. Like I said, you can't type into this, but you can just use it as like a basis for organizing your fractured fairy tale. So what's the problem that your characters are facing? What's the solution? Beginning, middle, and end. And um, so I'm going to read you. What a student submitted to me last year. Um, I just gotta find it. Where did it go? There we go. So, um, this is a fractured fairy tale from a student who I did this lesson with last year. Anakin was a cloud giant. He uh, so, okay, so story is Jack and the Beanstalk from the perspective of the giant. So he is changing the perspective of the story of Jack and the Beanstalk because it's traditionally told from the perspective of Jack. Anakin was a cloud giant who lived high up in the cloud castle. He lived peacefully and enjoyed watching the lands he flew over. One day he decided to have a walk around the skies and jumped from cloud to cloud without a care in the world, for he knew when he returned he had his lovely wife. He saw mountains and cities, he saw castles of friends in the distance, as nice and glamorous as his. It was nice, but he missed his home and family, so he quickly thundered home, thinking of the riches he earned, um, his pet hen Goldie, and his marvelous magical harp that sung the greatest music to him and his wife. 
He was overjoyed at the prospect, but soon confusion settled in when he found some positively massive plants had broken through his front yard. So he entered his castle to question his wife of this new plant. However, when he entered, he could smell the faintest whiff of human. He had never dealt with humans before. He only knew what his friends told him. Something else his friends had said was that the ice giants would say an intimidating line to try and smell the human's fear musk. He did not know what to say, as he was no fighter. So Anakin spoke something from a story he had read once. Be fi fo fum I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. Wow. He never felt so awkward before. Although his mind was calm when his wife came into the room, he trusted her deeply. So when she said there would there were no humans here, he believed her without a doubt. He was confident that his wife would never lie without very good reason. He was relieved and quite tired from everything that had happened today, so he decided to sleep it off and maybe investigate the plant later. So he slept, dreaming of his precious harp and lovely ham and even lovelier wife. But eventually his sweet dream was shaken when a yell so desperate shot itself into his ears. A voice he could never forget. His harp, who at this point was screaming out for help as he was being kidnapped. Anakin shot up and raced outside the door and saw the tiniest of humans climbing down the stalk of the plant, holding his harp in hand, a large grin on, his, on their face. Preposterous! A human comes into his castle and steals his harp and hen, things he cares very deeply for. Unacceptable, he shouted in his head. He then began climbing after the thief, as no crime would go unpunished. His mind raced. He could bring this as a complaint to the king of these lands. He could take back everything stolen, and more and then, crunch, he felt something far down fall hits the earth. Then suddenly he began to fall. In an instant he hit the ground and was crushed under the heavy stalk of the massive massive plant. His life a life ended for greed, Anakin said. So it's pretty good. This is um, basically recounting what happens in Jack and the Giant Beanstalk. Um, just a little bit you know, we got some different things happening there, and we get a little bit about uh, a little bit from the perspective of the giants. So it gives you a good idea if you are having. Um, this is where you're going to have to do a, your graphic organizer that I showed you, where you can organize your thoughts. You can't type it in. Some of you have printers, I've noticed. So if you want to print it and write into it, that's perfect. Um, if not, just uh, write it out on a piece of paper or type it up in your graphic organizer. But your Fractured fairy tale should be about a page in length, I would say. About the length that I just read the Jack and the Giant bean spot beanstalk from the perspective of the giant for you. So um, have fun with this. This was a very fun assignment that I had given my students, and um, I really look forward to reading them because I got to read some pretty cool fractured fairy tales. And uh, this is something I'm going to continue to do in my years of teaching to come. So um, enjoy, have fun. If you have any questions, ask away. Until then, enjoy writing a fractured fairy tale. <laughs>